tonight we're going to be discussing in a committee meeting something that's probably as important to this county and this city as, as anything that we do. Um, the, uh, the state started about five years ago, I think, talking about um, our, our PSAPs and what we need to do. So they are going to, the, the state is taking the number of PSAPs down the state down from 114 to 79. And what that means is some of your counties are having to, uh, well, all work together. Uh, like right now in our, P, in, our P, in our dispatch center, we have Faulkner County, City of Conway, and then UCA is a separate PSAP. But under this new guideline, uh, UCA would still be able to maintain theirs, but they'd have to pay for it themselves. But under this new guideline, Faulkner County and the City of Conway are going to have to join uh, partnership on this and only have one PSAP. So uh, Jim Baker has been a tremendous asset on this and worked really hard with us on this to, to get this up and running. Uh, he and I put together a task force, uh, Chief Winter, Chief Tapley, Chief Harris, um, Chief Ledbetter was on it at first, but County Roads got busy. I had to kick him off. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't be that many places at once, but I appreciate all the work you did, Mark. Uh, Sheila Blott with the county. Uh, Charles has worked with us and the county attorney. And uh, and then Gene Earnhardt, I can't remember the rest of them, Preston Scroggins. But it was a really good mix of city and county. And uh, they spent some time traveling, looking at other other cities, and have brought the plan back. What this, what they, what I want them to do tonight is bring you up to speed on everything that they know. That what we're going to have to do as a city moving forward, and we have to have this plan before the state of Arkansas by January 1st of 2023. And we have to have this settled between the city and the county as to who is going to run it. If not, the state will come in and say, we're going to give it to this group. Now, whoever runs it will get all the 911 money. Right now, it shows, uh, according to Mr. Winningham, who is on the uh, function tonight, it shows that we'll, there will be a shortfall of around 450,000 chiefs. Is that pretty close? Yeah, so it'll be a shortfall. We've been operating at a deficit between the city and the county, about 900000 annually. But they did uh, start, they gave us an uptick in the money, an increase in the money for uh, cellular phones. That has helped tremendously. I'm going to go ahead and be the bad guy here because this is going to have to be said. Right now we're looking at a 52% split with the city and a 48% split with the county. However, I'm of the opinion, and this, count, this, this group here in the county's group will get to make that decision. I'm of the opinion that there needs to be a fair share payout on this. That means it can't just fall to Faulkner County and us. It's going to have to fall to Bologna. It's going to have to fall to Greenbrier, Mayflower. Anybody that uses that dispatch center needs to pay their fair share. So if we can get to a break even on this, this is big. Because like I said, this is our residents' first line of defense in emergencies to call out with us. It's also our first responders' first line of defense and keeping them safe, our police, fire, and EMS workers. So with that being said, Chief Winter, Chief Tapley, is Chief Harris in tonight? Okay. Anyway, if y'all would step up and just, and council, when they get through, if you've got questions, please ask them. Well, this shouldn't take long because you said we're going to do a can on all that we know. Um, so, <laughs> so this will be pretty short. Um, this actually started probably back around 2010. Um, at that point, we had a committee. Uh, Chief Spradlin was on it at that time. Chief Winter was on it. I sat in on a number of meetings. And what we were doing, we were looking at ways to make our dispatch center more efficient, uh, more cost effective. Uh, it wasn't, at that time, it wasn't just about consolidation. We were actually looking at privatization as well uh, through ISP. For a number of reasons through the years, we just never could clear all the hurdles to get to where we needed to be. Um, and so, fast forward to 2019, the state steps in and says, okay, we're going to come up with a consolidation plan um, to consolidate all of the PSAP, the 911 plan in Arkansas. And so, they initially thought that they were going to do 77 uh, of those within, within the state. What they ended up doing after having federal engineering come at it and decided that they were going to do 79. Um, all of this, all of the counties will have one, except for Pulaski County will have three, uh, Benton County will have two, and Washington County will have two. And what that means for us is that we have to consolidate 
same with Faulkner County, as far as Faulkner County has in relationship with us. We start out in a pretty good position, uh, better than a lot of the places, because we already cohabitate. Uh, we're all in the same center, um, so that is one big hurdle that we don't have to, to try to figure out where we're going to go, where we're going to set up operations. So that's, that's a big thing for us. Earlier in the year, uh, the judge and the mayor set up a committee, uh, steering committee, advisory committee, on where we should go, what we should do. And there's 11 people on that. As he said, there was a number from the county, there was a number from the city, um, and we sat down trying to figure this out and hash it out. Uh, has to be done by January of 2023 and turned into the state. Um, after it's turned into the state, then we have until January of 2025 to actually finish. We've got this year to get our plans together. We then have two years in order to put it in, into action. Um, we started in March of this year. Uh, our first meeting, all we did was we nominated the chairperson, which is Assistant Chief Chris Harris. I have to tell you, um, on the beginning, I have to brag on him. Uh, I don't think we would be where we are right now without him doing the things that he's done. He's done a tremendous job on this. I would agree. Uh, April was our first actual meeting, and we discussed a number of things, the more important things in that meeting, and we took votes on them. Uh, initially, what we discussed was that all of the money generated by the 911 service fees, the, the phone fees that we get in each year, um, on both the county side and the city side, we believe should go 100% back to the taxpayer. Um, and that's what we should use to try to run the center. Uh, we voted on that. It was a unanimous vote, 11 to 0. Uh, I think that is absolutely the right thing. Uh, another thing that we voted on is that if those funds are insufficient, if we do not have enough money to make it this year for our budget, um, we decided that that should be based upon population. Uh, there was basically two different ways you could do it. You can base it on population, or you can base it on call volume. Um, everybody there felt that the correct way to do it would be on population, uh, based on the most recent census. Um, that puts us at a 52-48 right now. So, um, the third thing that we talked about and voted on was that there is a differential between what city employees make as a telecommunicator and what county employees make as a telecommunicator. Mm -hmm. And we feel moving forward as a, a consolidated center, the person sitting on the other side of the desk from you that's doing the exact same job as you mm -hmm. needs to be making the exact same money as you. Mm -hmm. um, so our recommendation on that is that the county employees uh, would be raised up to be equal to the city employees in pay. So that pretty much took up our, our whole first meeting. Um, the second meeting we had, we actually had HR from both the county and the city come in and talk to us because we were discussing benefit plans, uh, retirement insurance, things of that nature, and we wanted to get a real good feel of what those were because we have to make a decision as to who holds the PSAP, whether that's going to be the county or the city. Mm -hmm. um, they came in, they talked to us, we spent a couple weeks looking at it, uh, mm -hmm. trying to determine on an individual basis what we thought was the best. We came back at the end of May uh, to vote on it. Uh, when we started discussing it, there were a couple of members that felt that we needed to reach out to the employees um, and get input from them on it before we voted on it. So we postponed that vote uh, for another couple weeks. We did that. We went and talked to the city employees. Uh, they went and talked to the county employees, and we came back together. At that time uh, is when we voted as to who was going to. It's basically who's going to hold the budget. Um, and this is the only vote that it wasn't a unanimous vote, um, but the vote was seven to four in favor of the city holding the budget. Now, what that means is the way we've got this figured out is that there will be a director over the center. Um, that director will report directly to an executive board um, which will be over the budgets and, and things of that nature. Um, so it's not that we're going to fire all the city employees or we're going to fire all the county employees. Those employees will remain intact. 
all that it means is moving forward as we get new employees, who do they go under? Do they go under the city plan or do they go under the county plan? Um, and we decided the city plan. Now, for those employees that are with the county, uh, if all this goes through, they will have a choice. They can either move over to the city plan if they would like, or if they would like to stay on the county plan, then they're allowed to stay there. And that's for a number of reasons, uh, most of which would be retirement. Uh, you definitely don't want to take somebody that has, is vested in their retirement at a particular agency and then force them to move into someone else. Um, so what would happen is, as we move forward, as those people retired or left for other reasons, as they come back in, they would be city employees. Um, we based that on the model of Benton. Uh, we had gone and seen Benton PD, uh, Saline County. They had merged for us. That is what they did, and we all thought that that was fair. So th that's kind of what we settled on. We set back on July 6th. We went to Jonesboro. Uh, we went there to view their emergency operations center. Uh, the judge wanted to go up there, so we all loaded up and went. Real good operation. They have an advantage over us in the fact that they are not a new center, a new consolidated center. Uh, they told us that they have been doing this for almost 30 years. So we were able to see what they were doing, how they were doing it. And surprisingly, most of what we had come up with was exactly on track with what they did. Um, they had a couple of differences. Uh, one, the executive board that they have was formulated a little bit different than what we had envisioned in our mind. Um, and in addition to that executive board, they have an advisory board, uh, which we had not thought of or had not considered. So we did bring those two things back. Uh, when we came back, Mayor Castleberry and the judge were able to talk about it, um, and they decided that that was the way that we should probably go. Um, an advisory board and then the executive board. Executive board would be made up of six members. Uh, it would be the county judge, the mayor, uh, the police chief for Conway, the fire chief for Conway, the sheriff of Faulkner County, and then one mayor from outside the city that is elected by the other mayors within the county. So that would be a six-person board that would be, uh, be the executive board that the director would report directly to. The advisory board would be made up of different mayors from all the other cities in the county. Jonesboro does it just a little bit different. They actually have all the mayors, all the police chiefs, and all the fire chiefs, I believe, uh, on that advisory board, but that makes for a huge board. And, and you guys know, the more people that is, is on a committee or a board, the less that actually gets done. So uh, this would be made up of all the mayors of the different cities. Um, and that's something that they both agreed on, and that's kind of where we see ourselves moving forward. From here, where we think we should go or what we think we should do is uh, there's an inter interlocal agreement that uh, we are putting together. We had it put together, but with the new changes, um, Charles is, is going to make some changes on that. If the mayor and the judge both agree with it, uh, with the way <coughs> it's written up, then what we would do is we would bring it back before you guys uh, for you to agree upon. The county would take it before the quorum court. Uh, if everybody agrees on it at that point, the next step that we really need to look at is finding uh, a director and hiring that director. We need a singular person that is going to champion this and make sure that we are in step and on time for all of the deadlines that we have moving forward. Um, we've talked a little bit about that. We're not sure exactly where that person comes from, but I, I believe we've talked about uh, opening it up uh, nationwide uh, to see what kind of input, to see what kind of expertise uh, we can get. Because truth is, we don't know what we don't know. Um, and if we have somebody that has experience in that, then, then that will help us overall. Um, when we start talking about the budgets, he, he touched on this a little bit earlier. Based on 2021 numbers, uh, we would be about $452,000, $453,000 short. Um, in 2021, the city, uh, our budget was 
$1.27 million for SEOC. Uh, in PSAP funds, we brought in approximately $880,000. Um, the county brought in approximately $810,000. Now, that number fluctuates from year to year. It's based on cell phone usage. So we can't always guarantee that it's going to be that. It may be that. It may be higher. It may be lower. Um, so we expect to start out with a deficit um, when we bring these two together. Our goal <coughs> is to work with the director to try to come to as close as possible to breaking even. Um, I, I can't stand here and tell you that we can. Um, I can't stand here and tell you how close we can get. We need somebody that's going to come in and look and see where we're duplicating cost, uh, where we can cut things and, and build a more efficient program. Uh, and those <coughs> things are what will lead us to cost savings or at least to being able to break even. So, um, Did you, do you know how much the county's deficit is for operating their side? So I, that's difficult because the county actually breaks into two different budgets, is my understanding. Part of the money goes to OEM, part of the money goes to the sheriff's office. Um, so I, I couldn't stand here and tell you exactly where they're at with it. Because I would assume they'd absorb those expenses on their side and then get all the revenue, but I'm just trying to see how much they need to. Sure. Historically, it's been <coughs> about 400000 each. I guess. Yes, sir. Yes, 900000 yes. total. <laughs> and like I said, we expect... We expect on the front end for this to come up short on, on yeah. those funds. But well, it already is. It, it is, yeah. and I really think that as we move forward, looking at those cost-saving measures, we can we can make it better. So, but, but also it, pays you uh, fair share. Yeah, yes. Um, and you may know the answer to this. I know that Chief Castle does. Um, so do we envision, once this is all kind of resolved, and assuming we are the entity that handles the budget, would it become a separate cost center? You know, like streets and the airport? Yes. It would be a separate thing. Okay. So pull out of the general fund. It is, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, uh, Based I, upon I was that. reading something, Chief, so you may have touched on this. Did you discuss with them the vote that the uh, committee took? Okay, I think I did. I was, I was, I was yes. I, yeah. I can't do two things at once. I was Chief, really if, if, yeah, okay, so say the employees, someone will go to the city of Conway, someone will remain with Faulkner County. So all the salaries are going to be taken out of this pile of money mm -hmm. for, for that. Okay, if we do a COLA raise on our city employees, what, what does that do for the people in our county for trying to keep them? pretty much pay parity and all that. So the idea would be each. to keep everybody parallel um, okay. on pay, which would depend on Charles to, uh, to come up with the wording uh, and the legal aspect to make sure that, that us, however we move the money to, to pay for those employees and get that done, um, that would be up to him to figure out. I know it can be done. Saline County is doing it uh, that way. So uh, maybe we model after how they have it worded. And, bu and bonuses, like Christmas bonuses. Mm -hmm. I mean, the idea is they would everybody would be under the city umbrella, um, and that they would all be paid the same. The bonuses would be the same. Okay. Everything would be the same. Insurance would be different, obviously, because they're under the county. They can't be under the city insurance. Right. Um, but I don't know if it would be a reimbursement to the county or. If we're running in a deficit, maybe it's not a reimbursement. Maybe it is that they're not putting in as much money based on those numbers. Um, Let me ask this. Is, is the city typically always going to pull out this in the last seven, eight years? In, in the last, <laughs> last six, y'all have been real good to give we didn't prior to get one till this year. Right? I was going to say, we, we have gone, gone, we have gone a long time. We, we were right. a long time yeah. with nothing. That's what so I'm saying. You're going to have to keep them equal. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, that's, so, I, mean, I don't want any animosity. You know. employee, they are essentially under the city. Correct. Yeah. That is what we're always going to be able to do. I mean, it sounds like we're paying. Oh. We, <laughs> if we got the pot of funds and, and we're in charge of getting everybody paid, we're mm -hmm. paying. Mm -hmm. we, have Another, a, we have a final number on that pot of money. As, as far stands, as as if uh, we were to take this over January one, let's just say this year. I know we're not. Mm -hmm. What do we have any idea of 
what the, the funds generate. So year. I can tell you what they generated last year, and okay, it, it changes awesome. quarter to quarter. Last year, the city brought in eight hundred and seventy-nine thousand uh, dollars. The county brought in roughly eight hundred and eleven, eight hundred and ten, eight hundred and eleven thousand dollars. One point six, roughly. One point six, one point seven, somewhere in that area. So I can tell you a broad overview. I can't get into the weeds on it, but generally it is out of cell phone uh, funds, cell phone taxes that are are on your bill each month, and that money comes in through that. There's a separate fund that comes in for landlines, but that fund is diminishing yearly. So that's where most of that money is coming from. So the cellular provider charges the tax on your bill, remits it to the state, and the state will fund it out to the county as portion of the that's. That's my understanding, yes. But the city takes takes over, as the committee recommended, check will come directly to the city. So if someone was living in the county of Lake County, they would have to pay the tax on the cell phone charge. Mm -hmm. uh, the cell phone charge for the electric bill, the city pocketed the tax on the cell phone charge, and they paid that on the cell phone charge. Do you think that the Colorado would pay the tax on the cell phone charge? I don't know the answer. I wonder if it goes by billing address, not phone number. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The answer to that good question. I don't know. We can get an answer. I would think billing is your answer. Yeah. I have a question. Sure. So, if we include all these other entities, Bologna, Greenbrier, such that's right. in Potter County. But I mean, are they even aware that this is happening right now? That, that yes. Okay, and they don't feel like they need to have any part in any say so. What's getting what's let, let getting talked that, about Chief. right now? It depends on who you're talking to. Uh, I know some that are very supportive of it. I know some that are not so supportive. They want to stay with the county and not no, have no, a seat. they just don't. Uh, well, did, I, did I misunderstand your question? No, no, no. Okay. No, I'm just, you know, we have a committee of 11 people, and I'm just thinking we're making decisions for right. we're going to hold them accountable to pay us. But I didn't know if they even knew this was happening and they were possibly going to have no. to pay us. In, in their people. defense, in their defense, some of these smaller cities have, have a problem, you know, with, with their revenues, and that, that's very understandable. And for, for ever since we've had the 911 system, the city has taken care of the city and the county has yeah. paid mm -hmm. everyone else's. Mm -hmm. But now, under this new plan, everybody's going. We need everybody to pay their fair share. So you've gone from never having to pay anything to oh well, we may have paid thirty thousand dollars yeah. a year. So it will be a financial strain, which I do understand their their concern with it. But, but hopefully, that but will we can't operate the deficit. We yeah. can't operate the deficit. Yeah. Previously, I think you just said the county basically subsidized those outside cities. They, we the city of Conway didn't subsidize for as an example. Part of counties. Mm -hmm. Pot, pot, subsidized. Mm -hmm. Green so, so the difference is, we weren't out anything before. We don't need to be out anything going forward. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Another so, thing, Chief Tapley, whenever any calls come in, are they going to be dispersed amongst the 911 operators? Or, you know, county goes to county, city goes to the city ones. Right. Will it be just so everybody will be the same and you take the next call? That is the thought, is that. One of the things that is important is that our computer-aided uh, dispatch system are, are currently different. Moving forward, in order to optimize the center, we need to be on the same CAD system, and we have talked about that. Um, we've talked about the county possibly moving to Southern software, which is what we use. There is a grant through the state that we might be able to utilize uh, to get some money to help us with that. But in order for us to be the – we can run it without – we can run it with two different CAD systems. Uh, but in order for us to be the most efficient, cut down on the most number of transfers, and provide the best service for our communities, we need to be on the same CAD system. And that's that's an expense that we're going to be looking at. Hopefully the state's going to help us out with that. Um, we haven't really been focused on, on the, the fair share uh, cost at this point. Our goal at this point has been to get this consolidation plan together 
um, based on how we are going to run things up there as far as the CAD system, as far as the director, as far as the governance of it, um, so that we can get this together and before the state before January, because that's when they say we have to do it. Um, and we have to get moving. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And back, let me back up a little bit. I've only talked to two of the mayors, and they, they've been pretty pretty good. Uh, Preston Scroggins understands it. I've not had a chance to speak with Greenbrier Mayor, but, but I will. Sammy's he's a good guy to talk yeah. to. I'm, I understand that this. Pardon me? Sammy Hartwood. Yeah, he's the mayor of Greenbrier. This is a collaborative effort between county and cities. It's a good thing. And it, it's the way mm -hmm. the state's going to make us do it. We don't have a lot of choice. It's a good thing. But I wonder if this is a concern. If we control the budget, it's basically the city department. And we can have the county employees and we can service the county, but if we control the budget, it's the city department. Now, directly or indirectly, every city employee answers to the mayor. Your people answer to you and you answer to him. Your people answer to you and you answer to him. This director doesn't answer to him. Mm He's -hmm. a city employee. So I don't know how. He's going to answer well to that executive be. board, which is. Oh, oh scrapes. Yeah. Well, but we're, we're the ones paying people, and we're the ones that ultimately have the responsibility. Well, we're going to have three out of those six people that work for the city, and the other two work for the county, and then one, whoever comes I, I, in. I, mean, I, don't, I see your point. I don't know how yeah. that's going to work either. Mm -hmm. you know? So the way that Jonesboro has it set up is as far as day-to-day -day operations, um, that director still answers to, I believe it is the police chief up there on day-to-day -day things, um, if it was something bigger, budget, um, things like that, then it goes before the executive committee. So uh, the small things, the day-to-day -day that you can't get together with a board every single time, still goes before the police chief uh, to handle those things, and then the larger things go to the executive board. So how does that board, how, how do they approve the, the budget if they haven't so <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's difficult. It's a good so question. What has to happen is that the, the director would bring the budget to the executive board. The executive board would review it uh, beginning to see if there was anything that, that didn't need to be or needed to be. Uh, if the executive board agreed on it, in which part of that board is the judge, part of that board is the mayor, um, then they would bring it before the council and the quorum court. It, so if there's a deficit, the quorum court still has to say, yes, we're going to pay that and budget that. Um, same, same as here. City council would have to say, yes, this is the budget. We approve this instead of, or no, the, or no we don't approve it. Yes. Yeah, the quorum court still plays a big part. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it is a, it is a, a joined effort um, all the way through. Charles is going to have fun with <laughs> it's not that it's not going to be difficult it's just it just has to be done and like i said this is one thing we have to have right mm -hmm. from day one mm -hmm. do do all the smaller cities and i know greenbrier does and bologna and mayflower do all of them have separate police forces and separate fire departments so I'm just thinking about the right. I, I believe, and he can probably he can definitely talk more about this than I can. I believe outside the city, it's all volunteer fire departments. Correct, twenty-three volunteer departments. Greenbrier has has paid members now. Bologna in Bologna, Greenbrier, members. Bologna. Yeah, uh, but yes, there are twenty-three that, that the county currently just has to pay. Because I was just thinking when you were talking about the fair share, I can see if you have police police force any size, any kind of need for fire dispatch that you should pay your fair share for yeah. that service because that's that's bigger than the county yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And greenbrier and uh bologna and mayfair busy. they're all fairly busy cities right. they have a lot going so on so i was thinking more about you know yeah. like mount vernon you know, or, you know some of the small i just didn't know if they had like one police officer or two police you know i i just don't know also though their populations are going to be Smaller. Very small compared to anything within mm -hmm. the city or the, the yeah, larger cities sure. in the county. Um, yeah, and we're not so. talking about a huge sum of money on the fair shares. I don't even know. About, right. Yeah, no, <laughs> no I, don't think, I don't know what those numbers are now. Uh, have y'all had any conversations? Uh, I know we did earlier with UCA 
Do you kind of know where they are on this? We actually had a meeting with uh, UCA and uh, 911 Executive Board Director a couple of weeks ago, and they're in the they're in the determining nation's phase of figuring out whether they're going to remain a PSAP or not. Uh, UCA is a PSAP, but they're fully funded uh, by themselves, and they're trying to figure out whether that is a benefit to them or whether it would be better to go under the umbrella of everybody else. Um, and I don't know that that's a decision that they have made yet. Okay. I'd also like to thank, uh, is it DJ with the state? CJ. CJ and uh, AJ Gary. They've been very good to answer questions anytime we've we've had any. Mm -hmm. yeah, we've still got a long ways to go before January, um, <laughs> but uh, that's we've we've done really good in the last few months. Uh, the next step, absolutely, is getting that interlocal agreement drawn up and before you guys in the quorum court, um, so that we can start moving forward. Mr. Hawkins, I'll get you an answer on your question. That's a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions for either of the chiefs? Okay. Council, we got about 25 minutes. So. Yeah.